could be passed on through into future generations. There were was a period where large swaths of the population were basically kicked out of Youngberg proper, uh, kind of basically pushed out towards the eastern region, which now uh, is host in the southeast to Mukka, uh, kind of the remains of some of the people who managed to lay claim to some land, uh, now the slums. Um, above that is Pibor, which is basically the one area that isn't heavily restricted currently. Uh, that's our Parley border district. Um, I know I've talked to some of you about it extensively already, but it is an area that we do see mob activity. Um, although here, unlike in our maybe more typical expectation of a mob environment, the mob does seem to have a real push towards an expansion of knowledge that the city itself has been restricting basically since the spell plague. Um, the isolation, the shutdown, and the restrictions led to a temporary safety while the spell plague itself petered out um, and things started to kind of stabilize again in the continents. Um, that obviously all the things that happened during the spell plague led to a lot of uh, people leaving their hometowns, traveling, looking for places to stay. In the mountains, there was really only one place to go since you couldn't get out, and that was Youngberg. So the city has faced massive population issues, resource issues. When you suddenly shut down a magic city, uh, it has to learn entirely new ways of fending for itself. Luckily, the mines and the caves offered some level of uh, protection. So the western area of Youngberg, which is the downtown region, basically was built into the mountain face and has been able to avoid a lot of the flooding issues um, and has basically become a massive sky rise mountainous cityscape. Um, north of that, we have basically Laudville, uh, what is now an arts district that goes from both those high rises and spreads north into some of the mountain district and towards what is basically the Silver Falls, the one most beautiful attraction in the region, uh, a massive uh, waterfall uh, and hiking district. One of the only safe places in the dark woods that is maybe more accessible these days to druids and people who would still want to explore them. Um, the Tri-Town Wizarding Academy, as one could imagine, was restricted and eventually shut, has since been rebranded. Um, that is now basically a medical school, um, uh, the full name of which, let me grab it because it's super silly, it goes by Flog uh, University, but it's basically a medical school uh, that is trying to reskin the use of magic as only magic that is scientific can be utilized here and only when heavily restricted by the city. Uh, think for use like in hospitals uh, and to make sure that people are able to stay healthy when they're youthful and contribute as much as possible to the society. Um, full mm -hmm. university name now is the Pedagogic Preparatory School of Phlogistic Studies. Um, oh. Danny, how long has that rebranding been going on for because I know that you have connections to it um I would say maybe 25 years beautiful so yeah uh, and then really quick do you have, do you have the map handy I do can can you take a picture and just post it in the I did it's in world building okay it's I'm also a, right I'm, here. A, I'm a visual person so I like to follow along okay mm -hmm. let me uh take a picture of this yeah, anyone who's trying to follow my map, it's in uh, the world building subsection on the side of the chat. So you can actually see what I'm talking about. So basically, since the spell plague hit this region, um, and the western portion of town uh, stayed healthy, built itself into the mountains, was able to uh, isolate the youthful uh, folk who were here and still in good standing, um, and kind of build them up and make it sustainable for themselves. Uh, unfortunately, the opposite side of town, our, you know, eastern side, that includes Agfor, The Ridge, The Green, Slag City, Pibor, and Muckgut, um, most of the boroughs, as you can imagine, is heavily overpopulated. Agfor itself is probably the one area that is still sprawling um, on the east, but that's mostly owned and controlled by old money. Um, they're mostly forestry and agricultural areas. 
So they've been owned since the founding of the city. Um, a lot of those these days are facing flooding, so some of the value is going down a bit, but a lot of the old money exists in that region. And the ridge, the green, and Slag City is basically the region referred to still as Tritown. Um, in the center of that is the university and the hospital. Um, so that's basically the region that, like, your old wizarding school would have been, if you're looking at the map. Yeah, you're saying the old wizarding school would have been in... The center of the ridge, the green, and Slag City. Okay. You can, if you're looking at the map as, like, a collective, basically, all of the west, as well as Tritown, the ridge, the green, and Slag City, are built up. Um, the downtown region, obviously, in these massive skyscrapers that are built first and foremost in building format, but then leading right into the mountainside face itself as these massive mountain sky rises. Um, Laudville then kind of peters out a bit and then literally is built into the woods. And then to the south, the skirt kind of does the same, a little bit more boring and bland and suburban. Uh, it's more of a working class district. Um, and then when you pass Looking Lock, which is basically the waterway in the center of our entire Youngberg city proper, you're heading over a massive bridge and into what is the ridge. Um, that is the historic and university district. And you'd be basically passing through that to get to what is now the Flog University um, or the replacement for what was the Wizarding Academy. Um, so the ridge, Slag City, and the green, like Skyclave, Laudville, and the Skirt, would have more heavy police regulation. Um, you'd find uh, a little bit more presence in all of those regions just because it is a little bit more highfalutin, um, as far as the East is concerned, at least. Ag4 has lots of money, but it's mostly private property. Um, very rarely do you find yourself adventuring there unless you've got family or ties. Um, Pibor is where most people that are on the East would find themselves living, hanging out. It's the least regulated, and if you're from here and you don't have money, Pibor is usually where you can get what you're looking for, if you know what I'm saying. Muckgut is more of a crime-ridden, uh, barren slag land, <laughs> full of, like, the runoff from Slag City itself and a lot of, like, polluted waterways and uh, elderly populations who are dying off after being too old and too injured to continue working in Slag City and the mines. Um... So in the, you know, 90-something years since the end of the actual plague, you would assume that our city of Youngberg would have come to terms with the fact that maybe we should revisit the usefulness of magic. But as powers have shifted, the people here who are pushing for an expansion of medical research and whatever that might mean at the university, who are pushing for more scientific means and trying to... Uh, undermine more of the historic, literature-based, uh, founded research on magic, um, and experiment with what is still a relatively unstable and sometimes unpredictable magic weave that underpins the current of magic in the world. Um, it's not the city it once was. Um, and with all of the changes to both the geographical landscape and the restricted, more secluded nature of Youngberg since the spell plague itself, uh, mixed with difficulty in exporting since the shutdown of portal magic, it's led Youngberg proper to lose its capital status, as one can imagine. Uh, it's not being able to bring in the same amount of money, nor bring in the resources that popu its population truly needs to be able to have the housing and access to things that, they, that people would like, that we would expect in a major capital town. Um, so... With all of that said, we begin in Youngberg, um, and we will open in what is the Skyclave. Um, those massive high-rise skyscraper buildings and uh, massive foundations built into the rocky cliffside face on the far western side of Youngberg. Um, overlooking, if you were to be a little closer to the ridge, looking lock itself the one massive waterway, and one of the last regions of the Iker River that is still somewhat unpolluted enough to come in contact with, being still north of the runoff from Slag City. Inside of Skyclave proper, we find Sinker's Swim Bathhouse. 
about halfway up uh, our first sky rise. Uh, the place itself is a very lush spa. Super expensive, one that only people who are wealthy enough to be living in the downtown region can truly afford. Um, we see a big gush of smoke as a door opens and curving around the corner a, well, I'll let you describe your character. Can you introduce from fire for us? <clears throat> She walks into the room, and you see a tall, shapely tiefling, almost too beautiful to look at for more than a glance. You feel intimidated and, uh, sorry, intimidated and attracted all at the same time. She is fiery red with black raven hair and horns that are black and silver in the lamplight. She wears fitted flowing clothing. Right now she's wearing a flowing <coughs> uh, that's almost like compact, but more subtle and a hood thrown back. Today her arms are bare and you can see more red than her everyday outfit. Beautiful. All right, so you're slinking across the room basically over towards what is a seated region. Mm -hmm. uh, and you notice that in the far corner, a elderly tiefling woman with red flesh as well, white hair, is pouring a bit of water on some rocks, uh, erupting a little bit more steam into the room. Um, and next to her is sitting a goblinoid woman. She looks to be about 21, 22, pretty young. Uh, you haven't seen her yourself, but she is eyeing you. And I mean aggressively, <laughs> full up and down. Um, she is nude, fully nude, hanging out next to the little rock sauna corner. Um, and as soon as you look at her, she smirks. Do you say anything? Do you approach her? Uh, I just kind of smile and I continue on with whatever I was doing. So you, I'm, I'm assuming go to lounge? Oh yeah, I go and I make sure I have a big glass of water. Beautiful. So you, I believe, have a business in a nearby district, but I'm assuming this is one of your days off. Usually filled with a little bit of self-care, a little bit of uh, meandering around the more luxurious parts of town, taking in the sights, and sometimes visiting a local library. I mean, those are the things that people see me doing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you know that last night, as you're sitting here inside of this uh, steamy little sauna, getting eyed up and down by a sexy goblinoid lady, which, by the way, is considered relatively exotic here. We don't see a whole lot of goblinoid women, but she is done up. She has got really curly, bouncy, reddish hair. Uh, and despite being inside of a sauna and being naked, she is fully done up with makeup. Uh, you get the impression that she probably is the type to have some sort of a, I don't know, a business or contacts in Laudville, uh, which is known more as like the art district. Um, you're actually a little surprised that a goblinoid woman would be inside of a spa inside of downtown, um, especially one that looks more like a performer from Laudville. Uh, it strikes you as a little bit odd, but... You are very distracted by the fact that last night you were expecting your sister to come by for dinner. Uh, it's actually extremely rare that you prepare dinner for yourself, uh, let alone for anyone else. Uh, and you had actually gone out of your way to prepare something from your homeland. Um, it took you quite a while to source some of the ingredients. You had to go to a few exotic places in Laudville to get some of those things. That, wasn't super cheap. I mean, for you, honestly, it really was not bad. But for the average person, it would be quite a hefty sum to get some of these things. Uh, you prepped a full meal, and you found yourself waiting late into the evening for a sister that did not arrive. Um, so you came here in hopes of letting a bit of steam off, you know? Um, you find that despite the heat and the sultry glances, which normally might intrigue you, you are still very angry <laughs> and i'm also just sitting and thinking about it because like yeah. where is she like yeah. this is the first time that we've ever made a dinner plan so mm -hmm. i can't exactly think that this is weird but also like we made a dinner plan and mm -hmm. she didn't show up so there's like this like there's like the what the fuck and then mm -hmm. there's also this like what the fuck roll an insight check for me Sitting and 
stewing over my water next to the sauna. <laughs> I'm like poking the lemon really hard with a sharp <laughs> fingernail over and over and over again while I'm trying to think of what's going on. Then I'm. <laughs> oh, what kind of pluses do I get? Oh no, we lost somebody. Who'd we lose? We lost Kat. Um, so for insight, I want to say that wisdom is a wisdom, and then, yeah. And then if you're proficient in it, you get your Which I think you three. are because you have a star. Yes. So you'll have your proficiency bonus as well. Cool. So wisdom is four and... Your little box with a plus. Oh, I need to not use pin. Harmful. Yep. Um, Cat's back. So your proficiency bonus Sorry, is I think it's weird. Three plus your wisdom bonus. So 21 on insight. Hell yeah. Welcome back. So I rolled a 21 on Insight as I was stabbing my water thing, my, my lemon in my water with my sharp, sharp black fingernail. Nice. So you know that uh, it's not typical that she would stand you up for something. Like, she knows the significance of you making this dinner, right? It is not abnormal that she might stand you up for, like, I don't know, a lunch plan at a restaurant but you had told her that you had been sourced. You've been talking it up for like quite a while. Um, you assume that this must be personal. Like she must be irritated with you or she must have really gotten caught up. Like, and you're both worried, but honestly still more pissed. Um, and it strikes you suddenly that one thing that would might, might have kept her away from coming over is uh, her constant habit to, to take, your, take your shit. And you remember that you have a book that you had planned on returning today uh, to your librarian friend, mm -hmm. Susan. Um, you left it at your personal office, which she is not really aware of, but you have had suspicions she's been kind of creeping around and trying to follow you and figure out a little bit more of what you've been doing. She's only been here for about six months, your sister. And the longer she's been here, the less interested she seems in establishing herself, despite being young. She is, you know, of a ripe age to really come up through the sky rises, to work her way through downtown, to get admitted into the university if she wanted to. She really would have her pick of the litter, especially having a family member who is well-connected if need be. Uh, she doesn't seem interested in getting her help, and she seems very interested in proving herself. Um, and also screwing with you a lot which has really bothered you. Uh, she's way too curious for her own good, and she won't really tell you where she's been for the last couple of years. You know she got here on her own. Um, so you have been kind of trying to follow her, and you've caught her a couple times trying to follow you. Classic, right, <laughs> sister behavior. Um, so it, you realize that last week you kind of saw her following you around when you were heading towards work. You thought you'd sh like shook her, you realize you've got to go get that book anyways, and if she was going to mess with you, that's the one spot you really don't want her messing around. And if she found something, like some clientele info, or something that was sensitive, she might not come and talk to you about it. She might just go screw around and look into it herself. Um, you know that you have some clientele who are pretty highfalutin, who wouldn't want their shit fucked with, who wouldn't necessarily want to be known. You're quite private. Um, but she's a really good rogue. She's broken into some impressive places in the sky rise. You know she's stolen some shit that she definitely shouldn't have gotten her paws on. Uh, and it strikes you that it might be a good idea to, one, go return that book anyways and pay, you know, your librarian friend a visit. It might cheer you up. And two, maybe go check on your office. Well, I'm going to uh, go to my office to see if the book's there. Exactly. Two for one. So, you wrap up at the spa, whatever that means. Do you say anything to this beautiful woman eyeing you up and down? She's still, she is gawking. I look, it is obvious. I go up to her after I've toweled off and everything. And if she's, are she still in the water at this point once I'm done with the spa? Or oh, yeah, yeah. Else? She's 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 been hanging out. At this point, she's... She's fiddling with what looks to be some sort of, like, a drawing. Like, she's sketching. So she's not in the water, or she is? She's she's lounging nearby. Okay. Um, if she's it's not... Like a, it's, it's like a bathhouse, so at this point she's not necessarily in the water, but she's in kind of, like, a steam section still. That's what I do. So, like, I'm, I'm completely naked. I've toweled off. 
and I have gone to my locker and I've gotten my calling card. Ooh. Mm-hmm. And I go up to What does your calling card look like? Oh, it's black. It feels like a little diamond. Okay. Like it's it's in the, the shape of a diamond and it's like it feels like it. Like it was like carved, but not really carved. Like you don't really anyway, almost grown. Um and it has just like the name in Tiefling on the back and then where it is in the city on the other side. Beautiful. Uh and then that's it. And th- I just go over to her and I hand her the card. Beautiful. And I wink. And I walk out. I get red I get dressed and I leave. Like I don't say a single She word turns to so red despite how green her flesh looks. <laughs> Oh my, thank you so much. And she takes it and she would go to pocket if it realizes she's not wearing any clothes. So she tucks it in her book and scurries out before it gets wet. Um, let you leave on your way. So as you start to uh, pass down uh, along the way toward Evil Sins, your shop, mm-hmm. uh, Evil Sins is right on the corner basically of Laudville. So you're heading in the direction of the Art District at this point, so going a little bit north. Um, you get there, and you find on your door what seems to be immediately a taped note of some sort. Um, a little abnormal. But before we check the note out, what does your storefront look like? Laudville itself at this point, you're right on the verge of uh, what is more like Laudville proper. Um, still technically kind of in the downtown region, a little bit more ritzy area of Laudville. So still some sky-rise buildings. You can be anywhere along like kind of the you know, street side or the first few floors. It's not quite as high as the uh, Skyclave buildings, which are cloud rise, you know, size. They're massive. They could go up 100 plus floors. Uh, Laudville kind of caps out at about 10 floors. So there's there's still some tall buildings towards la- the outer edge. Uh, what does the front of your storefront look like as we approach? When you walk up, it has the size of it, you can't really tell the size of it. All you can tell is the size of the door. And the size of the door is only like 5'7". Oh, it's short. (laughs) And you see her like walk up to the door and she has to bend over to unlock it and to see this note on there. And then as you look up at the rest of the store and the door is black, as you look up, it turns, it goes from black to red to like black again. And like I said, it kind of blends in with the other buildings that are like right next to it. You're not really sure how much is mine, how much is not mine. And then there's like a door over here and a door over here. But like it doesn't really make sense. Like it's such a small door. Silly, silly small. Like, and then it has a big sign over the top. Well, it's not even that big. It's actually like, I don't know. So if the door is 5'7", the sign is probably like six foot big. Um, and it just kind of like glints, so it's like black, but it just kind of glints. And so the only reason like you really see it is if you're just like where like looking around and you're like, oh, what is this place? And it's just one of those places that you look at and you're like, I really want to go in that door. That anything in that door is gonna be fucking cool, but like, it's such a small door. <laughs> Heard tall, tall individuals. Go, so I'm assuming you have to duck a little bit. Yeah, I'm five nine. So yeah, you gotta I, duck. Yeah, I literally, when I stand in front of my door, I look like a giant out front of my door. Heard. It's, it's goofy to watch her enter. So as you go to enter uh, and pull out your keys, you grab uh, what is a roll of parchment that's been taped to the door uh, and unfurl it. And on that, you read, uh, F, took your spare key. Hope you don't mind. I've got dinner plans with a real fox tonight. Don't wait up. Sorry, T. And you recognize it in as the chicken scratch of your crap ass sister. <laughs> and I bet she signed it with a dick, didn't she? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Maybe some boobs. Mm-hmm. Something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Does she doodle? Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In fact, you recognize the dick as one that has absolutely been painted on the side of your apartment building's first floor, on one of the alley sides. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dope. Okay. Yeah. So, um... <laughs> I was imagining it's like, uh, you know, people like have a letter and then there's like the lipstick kiss mark on it, but it's clearly lipstick that you own. Oh, yeah. Yes. It's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Hmm. Okay, well, that answers that question. <laughs> For now. I go in and I get into my office. All right, so as you get inside, um, things don't look horribly torn up, but it's clear that she has, like, gone through your desk, like, looked through some notes, checked some, like, you know, client intel, and you do have an area inside of your desk where you keep a spare key to what is your other office uh, that you have never, you have been extremely careful to not take her to your separate office inside of Pibor, which you specifically use for therapy sessions in a separate, separate little, separate little, uh, circle of friends, one might say. Um, is it gone? That key is absolutely missing. Oh my. <laughs> that key is absolutely missing. Uh, which is feels- Is the book there? Uh, the book, you don't, you don't find it, um, but you can roll to see if there's any other sort of uh, clues? An investigate check would probably be my recommendation. I got a twenty. You got a nat twenty. Okay, so. Wow! First nat twenty of the game. <laughs> hey. So you find the book. The book is not actually stolen. Uh, good news. Um, That's that that was actually just tucked in a really horrible spot in your desk. Seems like you might have just like stuck it there, meaning to like you know tab a few pages, make a few notes. You didn't finish, and you were like. I got a little overloaded this week when she called me. Not surprised. You found the book. No biggie. Not stolen. But uh, you do find um, a tossed receipt that is not yours. You know that you have somebody that you have to clean this entire office, thick and span at the end of your work day. You don't leave a lot of things out and about. And there's a crumpled like note in the trash can. Um, it's got a time and uh, like a, a street name, um, a spot specifically that you recognize as somewhere over in Peebor. Mm -hmm. um, the time's about an hour and a half from now, hour from now, it's coming up. And it strikes you, it's got today's date, uh, as like some sort of like a meeting time, someplace she's gotta be going. Mm -hmm. um, you know that you do have a private eye that you've been having kind of occasionally check out her associates who she's been hanging out with. Mm -hmm. Um, and there are some missing notes as far as a few of your, like, they're not necessarily clients, but they're more prospective clients, people that you've been kind of schmoozing with in Logville and in some of Pibor, uh, some of which are names you don't necessarily want to share, um, that you've been kind of hoping to lock in business with, whether in Pibor or at this place, um, kind of your networking book. A mm -hmm. um, couple pages from that are missing, which you find quite concerning. Um, she mentioned in her note, your sister with on that 20 that she also was meeting up with somebody um that concerns you <laughs> like it concerns you that she has a date with somebody and that she skipped out on a really important familial dinner with you to go on a date after stealing some of your client notes and also went to your other office and had a date that night like this was a very tight timeline you know you saw her Yesterday, you were in the office in the morning. You okay. only had two clients, so it was not a very long day. You know, I you have left. To kill her. I yeah, you're gonna have to murder her. <laughs> I have to kill her. Yeah, if somebody else, you know, hasn't beaten you to it, yeah, you might want to track down that cool. sister of yours. Cool. Awesome. Um, awesome. Yeah. So. so, so you realize that one, you probably need to beeline it over there. But first, probably a good idea because she is actually very conveniently not horribly far from here. Um, you know that there is a really awesome, very well respected, and very well connected, very sultry, private eye, um, slash like, you know, personal business individual. You haven't yet been able to really have more than a few tracking sessions with, but she has brought back impeccable notes. Um, she's done a really good job of following, giving you a few connections, and she seems to know enough people here that it's not super expensive for you to just get a few names here and there of people she's been meeting up with and she seems to be uh, also fun to talk to. Mm -hmm. So you're like, maybe after all this horse shit, maybe she'll be somebody that would be uh, good to touch base with, get a little bit of intel, see who my sister's been running around with. You know that she was tailing her a few nights ago. She hasn't yet gotten you a report back. Um, you're hoping maybe she can tell you a little bit more about who this meeting may have been with, 
where she went last night, who she's been talking to, and you find yourself approaching. Ashlyn, can you introduce your business storefront for me? You, you find yourself at your desk, but approaching from the outside, paint us a picture of your for hire like office. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, well, so it's two story, um, quite obviously, like shop on the bottom uh, and uh, homestead on top and pretty like large open window near the front with shades drawn on half of it. Um, as you look through, you can kind of see some plants, a lot of shelves, um, some of which are locked. There's clear fronts to them. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of dark. <laughs> it's dark. There's small lighting. There's not the best lighting. Beautiful. It's, um, it's ambient, ambient lighting, mood lighting, yeah. I might say. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Um, so yeah, you, you're approaching this, you notice that there is a, you know, open sign, mm -hmm. um, in the window. You, however, and you notice this when you approach the front, um, you are already in a meeting with somebody. Um, it is actually a drow woman. Um, she's a little bit older, kind of approaching her, like, late 20s or right around 30. So kind of a little bit towards the tail end of her prime, but she seems to be well off. Um, she's super well dressed and she's recently come to you, um, kind of asking for some assistance, like trying to hire you independently. Um, but she's specifically trying to get you to follow the, one of the like very high ups inside of a uh, Soylent Bean, uh, which is a very large business over in Agfor. Um, you know, historically that most of like the cops in this region are not going to help her with this. Uh, and a lot of contracted people aren't going to assist either. Um, now, Soylent Bean has kind of gotten a really bad reputation in a lot of circles because they're like a mega conglomerate. And also, they fuel everyone that is in downtown, which is great. But it is kind of like a capitalist hellscape in some ways. Um, you know, you burn yourself out. A lot of people do, especially non-tieflings in their 20s and 30s, and then find themselves retiring to work in the mines before kind of just dying in the slums, um, <laughs> which isn't, isn't super ideal. Um, and Soylent Green has bought up a lot of land that could totally be used for housing. Um, they are... They've, they've been reported as polluting uh, a lot of, like, the recent, like, waterways and stuff. There's been, like, a lot of things in the news about it. Um, you know that, like, some sketchy shit's going on, but to mess with them is kind of uh, a real risk. You'd really be rolling the dice. Um, 